speaking of Hunter, I reached out to my mom because she went to Lucy Laney High School and she grew up in Augusta, Georgia. And I've heard her talk about that Jesse Norman went to her high school. She was a couple of classes behind. So I said, Ma, will you come on and share some things? Just little stuff, not anything deep. And so she said, all right, let me walk up <laughs> to the show. Ma, as it says in the thing, my mama, Margie Hunter Perry, because she just got married. And welcome to the Karen Hunter Show. Hello. Hello. Hi, Mom. Hi, Karen. But you left off the main thing. Margie Sweeper oh, Hunter so Perry. Sweeper <laughs> is her Nobody maiden knows name. Me from Lucy Laney under Hunter Nor Perry. Okay, they know you oh, as Sweeper. Margie yes. Sweeper. Margie Sweeper. Okay. In so, fact, that's how Jesse uh, announced me. Margie Sweeper, because we had so many Margies there at Laney, and um, everybody else called me Margie Sweeper. But um, I did attend Laney in the class of 61, and she was a class of 63. And at Lucy Laney um, High School, we did have a music appreciation class, which, you know, we were almost, mand- it was mandatory that we attend this class, but it was not mandatory that we sing in the choir. Uh, I chose to sing in the choir because we had a lot of fun and we took a lot of trips and I couldn't sing, but we did move around our lips. However, we had some great voices in that choir, and one of them happened to be Jessie Norman. And her very, very good friend, a young lady by the name of Andre Golden. Sometimes Jessie uh, would perform the national anthem at uh, some of the assemblies that we had in school or even at football games. Little did we know that she was on her way to fame. We had no idea, but we knew she was going to do something great because Jesse had that powerful and magnificent voice. Such a sweet, sweet spirit. Jesse is really, truly going to be missed. I just wish that I had, you know, known her even better, but I left Augusta in 64. So yesterday I got a text from my past pastor in, in New Jersey, and he he was a good friend of Clark Hamilton, who was in Jesse's class. In fact, I think Clark might have been the president, but Reverend Howard attended Morehouse with Clark, and he always talked about Jesse Norman because Clark knew Jesse very well. So, you know, it was a a loss for him also. And um, it's going to be a loss for all of us. She was truly, truly a great person. Well, thank you, Ma, for sharing that. I know she doesn't really like to be on the radio and stuff, but I'm so grateful that um, you were able to talk to me. And I thought the the greatest thing was that nobody knew she was going to be Jesse Norman. Uh, nobody knew nobody that. Nobody knew it. it. And that's the thing. All of us. <laughs> you know, that, that the, the famous people are usually right. the people no one's checking for. So exactly. we're going to talk about that more. But I just want to tell you I love you and thank you for calling and up I today. I love you too. And thanks for reaching out to me. Yeah. You're my mother. I'm going to okay. do that. Okay. Well, you're my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's mama. That's my mama right there. I Margie feel like we should Sweeper. play the theme to huh? that's, that's my mama. That's my mama. <laughs> Margie Sweeper. Hunter Perry, she got she she, she doing her you. thing out there. I was a part of a small group of executives who honored the life of um, of Jesse Norman in Chicago about three years ago, and she was she was so regal and so amazing her voice and that accent, and she was you know she was so larger than life in a really sort of quiet kind of way, and. Um, when she got on stage, even though the entire night was about her and honoring her, um, she gave she gave so much props to all of the people who had come before her, the women, black women. And she named she named, of course, Leontine Price and she named, of course, Marian Anderson. But she named um, black women in other parts of the world who were who were who were breaking through in, in, in similar ways and trying to break through in Europe and other places, too, that were not as congenial to to women of color and she talked about that about the that example and that struggle that night in a way that was really really profound because you could feel like that she she wanted 
to acknowledge those shoulders that even she stood on as, mm-hmm. as a trailblazer, that there were still people that she stood on their shoulders. And she talked about why she had the school and why she had all of the philanth- um, the, the uh, philanthropic work that she was doing to make sure that, you know, students could uh, still have that, that access, that and you, awareness. And you had a moment with her. And I, and I had a great moment with her, a great moment with her. I actually did not know who Jesse Norman was until I went to college and started to really listen to classical music. But I always remember her poster being on Denise and Vanessa's wall on the set of The Cosby Show. All, like little things like that. Powerful. You don't, you don't appreciate it until until later. Right. But I recognized her face from that poster being on Denise and Vanessa Huxtable's wall on the Cosby show when I finally, you know, got introduced to Jesse Norman at Morehouse. Mm, mm. Yeah. And she said something to you? Oh, yeah. So one, one of the things that w- I was I was one of the people that was tasked with making sure that she was good uh, and my uh, my former role or whatever. And I was talking to her about how much I loved when she was singing like the Wagner and all of the and, and singing German and stuff like that. And I talked to her about how at Morehouse we sang in, in lots of different languages and how I always struggled with the German. And she said, oh, you sang in university? And I said, oh, yes, ma'am. And she said, darling, you absolutely must continue to sing. And I was like, Jesse Norman told me that I must continue to sing. 